Welcome back everyone to Cooper Landing Fishing Guide. We're going to do a real fast trout spay fly. In the vise I've got a Waddington 25 millimeter shank. I've also got some large gold bee chain eyes here and I've got four of those eyes. I've got some 50 pound power pro for a trailer wire or trailer material and then a number four mosquito hook from owner. And it's going to be three quick, fast materials. We're going to use some uh, fluorescent fire orange Angora goat. Just going to use a little bit of a pinch of this for a hot spot in the back. I'll take out a little, little pinch of this. And, you know, as you've probably seen in previous videos, you know, a little bit of that Angora will make a you know, go for a long distance on your fly. So it can be a little bushy, so you just kind of keep it relatively thin, but uh, it does a great job of not only providing a, a hot spot, but also propping up your materials towards the front of the fly. And we'll pinch our dubbing loop and spin. Today I'm using Uni 3 aught thread. I usually use 6 aught, but uh, been breaking it a little bit lately, so I'll just up my size of thread a little bit. We'll comb out or pick out our Angora goat here. And then we'll wrap in touching turns to make our hot spot and material prop here. I really think one of the biggest you know, reasons for you know these flies working so well is because of a a hot spot, and you know when, anytime you can combine a hot spot with you know some propping properties, and you don't have to tie a bunch of other materials, it's kind of like a two for one. You know, normally you would tie in a little bump of material and then a hackle here, but uh, you get you know two two uh, materials for the price of one here. Next will be some marabou, so just some strung olive marabou. And I've already got one picked out here. I really like wispy marabou without a whole lot of you know, fluff towards the stem. We'll go ahead and put, tie this in here. And you can leave this tip in, no problem. And it's always nice to have some water to wet this marabou back, but uh, just to help tie it in a little bit easier. You don't want to go too crazy with marabou. Um, if you get too much on there, it gets a little thick, a little bit, uh, you know, kind of deadens the fly a little bit. So we'll use, you know, a few wraps of this relatively sparse, thin marabou here. We'll pull those fibers back as we wrap. And we'll, we'll tie this marabou off. And our last material, we're just going to use some rabbit fur that we're going to cut off of the, the leather. And we'll spin it into a dubbing loop. So I'll get a dubbing loop going here. And I'm going to bring my thread forward between the eyes and you know, right about where we'll start making our, our thread head and get our dubbing loop ready. I've already got some some fur cut off. Uh, you can use cross-cut rabbit strips. I'm, I happen to be using some cross-cut um, in an olive variant, but you can also use um, kind of regular uh, rabbit on the uh, leather. This Sometimes it's just easier to tie it into a dubbing loop when it's cross-cut. We'll add that to our loop. We'll cut off this leather. And then you can adjust your rabbit fur. You know, a lot of times if you want to get more coverage, you want to lengthen this, you know, spread this down the dubbing loop. And you can use the tip of your scissors to do this. I just, you know, in this case, I'm just kind of pulling it down 
with my fingers and generally the longer your dubbing loop the more coverage you can get so you can tie a lot further forward and once you've got it spread out how you like it then you can start to pull it into the correct length that you'd like for those hackles you can actually push on your rabbit butt ends here a little bit to get your desired length and then once you've got it spread out and how you'd like it you can pinch and spin and sometimes I'll trap all that material on the fly with a pipe cleaner but in this case I'll just pinch and spin and you kind of watch to make sure that nothing gets caught up in that loop got a little bit of marabou so I'll take my scissors and just kind of pull that out and spin it up nice and tight here and then we can pick it out with our dubbing brush and this will be the final material so a three material fly here real easy to tie most of the flies that I will be tying will be guide style flies so very few materials very castable you don't mind if they get broken or you know get cast off into the oblivion so we'll do a few wraps behind these eyes kind of get right up to them and then our our wraps will go basically through these eyes so on the the left hand side of the fly towards the camera we're actually going to go underneath that that eye and then back between those eyes back towards where we tied uh, behind the eyes and then we'll go under the the eye closest to me and now we'll be back in front of the eyes we'll pull all this back and wrap it fairly tight up against those eyes here and sometimes you get a little bit too much rabbit fur I might end up crowding the head a little bit here but uh, you know no big deal if you wanted to tie that off and cut off some of that extra rabbit we'll go ahead and tie this head it's a little bit crowded but nonetheless it will be a fishing fly so we're not going to be put, putting this on display in the fly fishing museum or anything like that so we'll you can kind of pull some of that thread back a little bit make our thread head here and then we'll whip finish and you can uh, finish this fly off with your favorite head cement of choice I like Sally Hansen hard as nails and we'll go with one whip finish there and then you can glue it a little bit crowded head we'll go ahead and brush it out and this will be a very simple three material trout spay fly and it kind of mimics a little sculpin a little minnow a little you know feeder fish pattern in our case up here in Alaska probably something like a little sculpin or you know a little salmon or trout and there you have a simple three material trout spay fly thank you so much for watching